So a lot of people think, well, that sounds a little ephemeral. Why, why are we talking about positive emotion? So what I'd like you to do um, is think about a situation that worries you right now. Just think about that situation that worries you right now. It could be something at work. Uh, my nine-year-old daughter has not been well. She unfortunately had the virus here in our home. Um, so she's been coughing like a coal miner for two weeks. And we've had a couple of nights where she's been up coughing and coughing and coughing. Um, so there are all these situations that really worry us. Now, next, I want you to think about putting a positive spin on the, that thing you are thinking about. Thinking of ways you can handle that situation or overcome those, those possible obstacles that are in your way. This is purely a private exercise. I'm not going to ask people to put stuff up uh, in the chat box because this is very much uh, a private exercise. And we talked earlier about the fact that it's easy to get stressed working virtually because we've got this um, you know, constant distraction, but it's also lonely. All right, it's really important for, for those leading. It's also lonely. Uh, I've done it for years, for 12, nearly 15 years now. Uh, and you lack that daily interaction. And that's certainly the case at the minute, which is why you see a lot of people just randomly working from cafes, just to be around the buzz of other people. Uh, and we do know loneliness is, is linked to depression. So why is positive emotion so important then, particularly in this uh, instance? Why is it so important for you as a leader of people um, to take this um, seriously from this big, long model, empowers model over everything else? Um, and the answer is to do with what positive emotion does. So when I ask you to think about a situation that really worries you, what, what happens is your mind um, starts to narrow its focus, that you can see the problem, usually in all its glory. And it's a bit like the equivalent of a saber-toothed tiger jumping out in front of you. And not only do you see the saber-toothed tiger, you make that saber-toothed tiger bigger and more frightening than it actually is. Not that I've ever met one, uh, but I'm sure. Um, and, and so that's a natural instinct of a mind sort of narrows. And when I ask you to think about putting a positive spin on it, how could you get yourself out of that, overcome the obstacles? What I'm asking you to do is what is known as broaden and build. And that's from Barbara Fredrickson's book, Positivity. Barbara was the first one to look at uh, why we have positive emotions. Simple question, why do we have positive emotions? And what she's found through her research, um, so this is Barbara's work, is that firstly, it helps us to broaden our perspective. And positive emotions were critical to cooperation and collaboration and build from independent bands of hunter-gatherers to cohesive little towns and hamlets to cities and so on. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second is we see more opportunities. Now, I work with our CEO, Gus, quite a bit, and we do this stuff all of the time. When the brown stuff hits the fan, rather than getting stuck in the problem, we stand back and try and say, where's the opportunity here? There is always, always an opportunity. And so if you maintain a positive stance, it's really important. Now, your teams may be struggling with particular issues and particular challenges. Raising the emotional state of your team changes their ability to solve problems. It increases your resilience. Now, I think most people are getting past this um, hedonic adaption point. We're getting to a point where a, we're getting used to this being the new normal. And so right now, we want to use positive emotion to help them uh, increase their resilience because there's going to be more challenges for sure. All right. Now, uh, lastly, from, from um, Barbara's work, it's key to individual thriving. So every single person, when I said, you know, imagine you're 109 yourself, talk about happiness, being at peace, being on holiday, and often we're on holiday because we uh, envision this sort of, you know, for me, uh, somewhere like Bali, palm trees, warm breeze through the trees, sitting, tranquility, blah, blah, blah. It, it's, it's incredibly important to our well-being, our physical, emotional well-being. Now, Paul Zak, which is the other book you can see there, he's researched oxytocin for 28 years. Oxytocin is produced by positive emotions. Now, Barbara Fredrickson is not a neuro 
scientist before she's a psychologist so she doesn't even touch this and so this is more about Paul's work oxytocin as I said earlier is critical to high performing teams um, and 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 that's um, something that people haven't quite cottoned on to if you want a really good high performing team high levels of trust high levels of positive emotion high levels of purpose and this positive emotion, this chat that you see often with teams, this joking that happens with high performing teams, uh, people underestimate how important it is uh, to performance. It's critical to trust building. A lot of the banter that you see between teams um, is actually reinforcing social bonds. Yes, you're one of us. Yes, you belong. Yes, your status is secure. And that's um, David Rock's scarf model uh, that I've just mentioned there. And finally, it's cr critical to maintain in morale in tough times.